Hello everybody, this is a viewer requested video. Basically, the viewer would like to know how can we go about generating a 3D printing code for a 3D model such as those created from CAD programs such as Rhino for eventual printing using Prusa based compatible printers. Okay, let's start. Let's look at the overall process of creating a digital model and have it being made into a physical one. Basically, it's been shown on screen. It entails firstly the creation of the digital 3D model using a 3D modeling program of a CAD program and then have that model exported as a STL OBJ file, which will then be bring into a slicer program. And the slicer program will then be used to generate a G code file and the G code file is then taken into a 3D printer for the creation of the physical model. So this is the part of the process that we will be talking about in this video. For our demo, we'll be using the Prusa Slicer program which you can download for free from this URL over here which is prusha3d.com backslash prusha slicer and there are several options pertaining to the various uh, operating system that you can choose from namely the windows the mac and the linux installer for this demo i have downloaded the windows standalone installer okay this one over here okay and i've already have it installed so let's head over to prusha slicer now okay now that we are in the Prusa Slicer's work environment, the first thing that we want to do is to load the configuration file that is um, relevant for our printer and its setting. Okay, to do that, go to File, Import, Import Config, and this is the file that we'll be using, which are extension of NIN. Okay, click Open, and you'll notice that the configuration settings that is um, been shown on the top right has been updated to reflect the changes. Okay, once that is done, we can proceed to load our model, which is the STR file. Okay, by going to the file import import STL and load the model. This is the model for our demo. Okay, it's in. To navigate the 3D viewport, uh, you can use the following mouse button process. Okay, to rotate, you can press and hold and drag the left mouse button. Okay, to zoom, you can slide the scroll wheel on the mouse, and to pan the view, you can press and hold and drag the right mouse button. Okay. The thing to consider before you do the slicing is to look at the areas that will present problems when doing the 3D printing, which are likely areas where there are overhangs. Okay, In this case here, this area will most probably present some problem. And let me try to explain what is an overhang. An overhang is a region on the model itself that when the 3d printing path moves to will most probably face some problems okay in this case here you can see that this is like a, a fairly horizontal region okay you can imagine that um when the 3d printer is in the process of making the, the model it will move along a horizontal path in this direction Okay, in this way and when that path comes to here because of the lack of uh, support in this region the print might droop or might not even uh, come out properly so this area will constitute a problem and is unknown as an overhang and to overcome it uh, support structures has to be created to prevent the the drooping or the difficulty in creating this part here okay so these are some of the considerations that you might want to look for when 
orientating the model okay and you can do the transformation or orientation of the model by using these icons over here and this is the move as the arrows are indicating in a self-explanatory way okay and this is scaling i'm not going to use this because the model has already been scaled to its correct size and it's not advisable to make any more changes to it unless it's required and this is the rotation okay so you can click on this and let's say i want to rotate this uh, this way here okay and if i'm going to rotate in this way most probably this area will not constitute overhang However, this area will still be and then these areas will be as well. So uh, there are considerations that you have to think about when uh, orientating the model. Okay, I think I will not want to have the model in this orientation. Let's uh, get back to its original orientation. Okay. And then we have uh, options like this um, based on face. Mm, let me just give you a demo but this is uh, not really required if you have already oriented the model correctly most probably in your 3d modeling program but let me just do a demo okay so let's say i'm rotating this over here like, like that and i want this to be uh this part to be here we can like maybe use this okay and then find the face that, that that you can move to okay in this case is this okay so you can see this face is now being snapped to 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 the ground okay so yeah assuming that i'm done with whatever changes that is required we can proceed to do the slicing okay okay i want to do a demo without the support structure first okay i can click the slice now and you can see that this is the part that's been created without the support structure and you can see over here this overhang area will present a problem with when we send this for 3d printing so in this uh, example we have to use a support structure so let's go to the support options and you can see there are a few support on build blades only for support enforcer only and everywhere i'm going to use the everywhere and click yes for the adjustments and then click the slice now and you can see that um, the software has created the result that is including the support structures okay so these support structures will have to be manually removed by you once the 3d printing is done by the 3d printer okay so assuming that now i'm happy with the the result and i want to export my g-code file i can do so by clicking on the export g-code and then save your result as a g-code file most likely you might want to you know, save it onto a multiple storage device like a sd card okay and with that i come to the end of this demo see you bye